Greetings. I'm the captain. I'm Chappers. And there have been many great questions asked in the life and the universe. There have. There what have. did the Romans ever do for us? I can't remember. Aqueducts or something. Uh, but um, the metric system. One of the questions that keeps coming up on our YouTube videos and Facebook and stuff like that was, if you've got a finite budget, yes, do you spend the bulk of it on your guitar? Say a thousand pounds. Yeah, let's say okay. I can I can go with that. Let's assume we have a thousand pound budget. Uh, do you spend the bulk of it on your guitar and you buy a, a cheaper amplifier, or do you spend the bulk of it on your amplifier and you buy a cheaper guitar? And uh, so Rob and I thought that's an interesting idea for a video. It is, and. I would err uh, on one side. Do you err uh, the same side? Well, uh, without wanting to sort of almost spoil the conclusion, because we haven't done the conclusion yet. No. But I, my gut feeling would be, if I was in a, if I was a young guy in a band, yes, I would have the expensive amplifier and the cheap guitar. Yes. And if I was a young or an any any guy, an older guy, young guy, whatever, just playing at home, yeah, I would have the expensive guitar and the cheap amp. I, I ex absolutely agree with you. So video over. Edit, end of video. <laughs> we really ought to. So, so I guess the idea is, is that Rob and I are going to flip a coin in a minute. So one of us is going to be in the expensive guitar cheap. Instead of a coin, let's make it this well, gravity I have, I, have a, I have a coin. You have a coin. Okay. I have a coin. Um, one of us will. So we've got our budget of a thousand pounds. Now I reckon that what we do is we make the split seventy-five percent. So you can. So your expensive thing oh can be God. up to seven hundred and fifty pounds. Okay. And your cheap thing. Can be up to two hundred and fifty pounds. Okay, so not like really, really expensive, yeah. but expensive enough that you know someone that worked really hard if they were a teenager and they worked and worked yeah. and worked and they had a grand, or just somebody that lives in Guildford with rich parents. <laughs> um, so here is a ten p piece. Okay. Uh, if you guess the correct I, head or tail, I'd like head. Okay, so if you get if it's heads, you can choose okay. as to whether you have the expensive guitar, or the expensive amplifier. Okay. Slow mo shot. It is. It's a head. Oh! Okay. <laughs> I would like to go for the expensive amp. Damn it. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. No, I, I. that's fine. So you can have a 750 pound amplifier, but only a 250 pound guitar. I'm going to have a 750 pound guitar, or up to 750 pounds, and a 250 pound amplifier. We're going to mic them up, we're going to jam, and then you guys can... We'll talk how about is, how we How feel. much is that? You could, have, you could go way more expensive than that if you wanted to. That's £450. Okay. So, good to know. let's go to the store. So, we've got a Grand Each, we're in Anderton's in Guildford. Yeah. And we're very excited because I won the toss, which means I get to have the... the good amp. The good amp and the affordable guitar, but okay. I think it's pretty easy. Now, one of the things Rob did say is, could I take my £750 budget and spend it on amps and pedals? And I thought, that's fair. You know, I mean, because it, it, it's all about kind of, that's part of your tonal creation yeah. thing, isn't it? So, <clears throat> so actually, really what Rob has is a 750 budget for an amp and pedals, and I have a 250 budget for an amp and pedals. So I'm fairly sure I'm not going to be buying any pedals. Um, but you never know, there are some there very are some, affordable pedals. I'm thinking pedals, Tone City Golden Plexi, 40 go. quid, bit of pedal. martial goodness on my sound. So but I've only got 250 quid to buy a guitar, a guitar with, and I can't get yeah. anything second hand. Yeah, no second hand. Yes. Which of course, you know, second hand is always a great option for people on a budget. Anderson's have a wicked second hand section which you can go to on our website and it's and there's like at least ten new products a day probably yeah. go on to our second hand section. So I'm gonna be but looking anyway, at Epiphone, Squire, going Pacific, Yamaha, that yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah. What are you what are you looking at? Well I'm gonna with follow your... you around. What do you want to do first? Right. Amp well, or first guitar? First of all, I would I, I think I want to go look at guitars first. Okay. So okay. can I take a look at what I can afford from Fender? Hello. From Fender. Well, okay, so you look at, you've got to look at Squire. Yeah. And you're probably looking at the Affinity Squire range because I think everything classic vibe is going to be sort of 300 and upwards. These are, these are. So these you've got, you've got like an Affinity Telly. Wait, is this? That's a three quarter size guitar. That's fine. You could go with that if you really, really wanted to. Okay, I'm going to be kind and generous to Rob because the cheapest vintage modified Stratocaster is 264. So it's only 14 pounds above. Or should I just be brutal and harsh? No, I'm going to be brutal and harsh. I want to win this. So <laughs> you have 250, so you can't have that. But I could have this. Why would you have? 
come on, Bob. If I'm doing this for someone that's younger than myself. Well, yeah, but like this is for an 11 year old. Not, but I could put, I could put like 12s on it and then drop Z in it. Because it's only 103 pounds. I'd have budget to put a Seymour Duncan in there. Uh, we're not doing that. Right. Uh, God, it's tough. You know what? 250 was maybe a... I found you one, Rob. Well, I'm not. But like, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of the I found you one. What's wrong with that? Actually, to be fair, that is good. Oh man, that's thin. Or I found you another one. What? How much is that? Two forty-nine. No way. That's good. I found you another one. Look. I oh, know. Sorry, that's five thousand pounds. <laughs> <laughs> what about this SG? This looks good to me. Oh, the SG looks really good. But this plays nicely. Yeah, that's a good guitar. Um, what is I this? This is the SA 160. Yeah. A nice flame top. I'm, I'm, HSS. Bearing in mind what I'm doing is probably for a beginner. Yeah. This neck doesn't feel very beginner. It's a bit chunkaroo. It's absolutely huge. Sounds better acoustically, but it's much harder to play than the Ibanez was, and therefore, in my opinion, this one is not gonna be coming home with me. It's tough. You know it's what, really Two, 250, maybe I'm kind of like, maybe where I'm sort of going? living in 1993 where 250 got you loads of guitars. It's inflation for you. Um, so you can still buy good guitars for that kind of money, but there aren't like hundreds of them. Where are your Yamahas? Uh, Yamaha, they may be a warehouse product, but I will find, uh, here's Yamaha, but it's Revstar, so 300 was the cheapest Revstar, so you can't have that. There should be a Pacifica there or something, somewhere. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Rabia wants me to look at these, but I think these are a little bit out of my budget. Starting at around £1,500. You know what, guitar shopping is a lot more expensive than I imagined, despite the fact that I did this all the time. Because... I've never really shopped for a guitar as if I was a beginner. Apart from when I was a beginner, 20 years ago. It's tough. There we go. Please, please, please do not be second hand, no, okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's second hand, I can't get that, which is What's a shame. How much is this natural one? This one is 202 pounds, there you are. it's a 112 V. That's so, this is, I, mean, I know I used to own an equivalent of this a while back, that's 279, but this may well be it. Obviously nothing from Chapman would ever float. What about down here, anything cheeky? It's such a shame that this isn't more affordable oh, as it goes, no. so goes with your skin colour. Yeah, it does. <laughs> After you've had a pint. You what are you talking about? So that's 600 quid. And I found another one that goes with your skin colour after you've had four pints. That goes with my, <laughs> my, my poo colour. Alright, well look, it's between this and the Ibanez. Okay. Well, it plays great. We'd call it a guitar a Linda. A Linda? This is a second-hand Samick guitar, but it's called a Linda. Why would you call Make it me a Samick. Why would you call it a Linda? Make me a Samick. Make me some vegetarian this sausages, Linda. This is my guitar. Great. Two hundred and two pounds. Well, you now have seven hundred and fifty pounds to buy. Uh, well, I'm going to choose my guitar though. Okay. So I have seven fifty. I want. I'm, I want to know if I can have an Amer. Oh, that was cool. That was a good guitar, wasn't it? You did that. You were you were in a video with this yourself recently, weren't you, Beazel? I think it's, I was indeed. Uh, nicely understated. It's so me. It plays great though. Ah, oh, what's not to like? The man himself. I could go Dave Murray. But I'm not a big Iron Maiden fan. Um, where's an American Special? I don't even know where anything is in my own shop. Oh, I think I like that better. I so loved the. I'm going that. You wouldn't want to go. You wouldn't want to look at the the PRS SE range. I just wanted. You just want Captain Nito, don't you? Yeah, that's true. I really should just get a Cap Ten, but I've done so, so many well, videos where I've got a Cap Ten. But what is that? Then? So this is a Fender Classic Player Strat, which is kind of top of the range Mexican, um, but with custom shop 
uh, 60 strap pickups in it. Um, it my man, I must have make it looks a little bit nicer than mine, but only slightly. I don't know. Do you know what? There's way more stuff that I could choose. I just want to, right, okay, what if I was going to go Les Paul? Because I, I do love a good Les Paul. I think 750, 750 should get me a faded studio. Mmm. Oh, 999, that's no good. I'm sure there's a 750 something or other model. Some, ah. Ooh. Mmm. <gasps> ah. Mmm. <gasps> ah. Mmm. Ah. Ooh. P90 loaded. Humbucker loaded. Tough choice. What do you think, Rubir? You think go Les Paul? Even though the Strat is just like the versatile guitar of goodness of joy of everything. You're probably right though, Les Paul. Can't go wrong with, if I get the right amp, I might not have. I'm going with the Les Paul. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm gonna win this. Prepare to meet thy maker. Oh, come on. I've realized that I could also get this Squire Telecaster electric guitar starter pack yep. for 225. That's the whole pack, but that's the answer. Yeah, but I'd have a spare amp. I'm, I'm, not, sure, I'm not sure whether I prefer um, the Tele or the, uh, or the Pacifica. I'm a bit torn, though. I think the Pacifica is the versatile one, isn't it? But this is a Tele. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Let's go Pacifica. I used okay. to own one. In fact, I still own one. So, we'll get this, I'll just get this de-tagged. Could you uh, de-tag this for me, my fine gentleman, please? Thank you all. See these little tags here? These are cool, because it means that you can come to Anderton's, you can take pretty much all the guitars off display, take them into a little room, try them, everything like that. But if you try and run out the store, ah, that's when it starts beeping and we chase after you with machetes. If I've only spent 202 pounds... <laughs> no. That means... You cannot have £798 to spend on your amplifier. No, but I've got £798 to spend. I think that's harsh. The, 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 so the... how much am I allowed to spend on the amp? It's two fi uh, no, £750. £750. £750. Okay. Oh, amp and pedals, £750. Okay. And so I have I... £250. So, so I, have, first. I have budget for pedals now. Yes. Would you... So have you already... I, I kind of... Have you already made up your mind what amp you want? Yes. You have, haven't you? Yeah, I have, yeah. Absolutely have, yeah. So, but, I, but I think I should be flexible and have a look, look around. Tell people the amp that you... Well, I would look around because currently we're saying you're so blown away by that Fender bass breaker. Yeah. Even though it's only £450, you're saying that... It's the best amp that Fender have ever made, in my opinion. So and you, I think you'd rather have that with £300 with a pedal. I would absolutely rather yeah. have a bass breaker with yeah. a delay pedal, with a, yeah. with a gain pedal and a yeah. tube. Well, you can do that. I mean, the Andy Timmons game pedal that you love is about 150. Cha ching! Uh, and then, like a carbon copy, which I've got in there, is the same. It's about 120. So that's that's pretty much your 300 pounds. Cha ching! Tom, how much is it, Andy Timmons? 169. So yeah, you could have the Andy Timmons and a carbon copy for your 300 pounds. That is absolutely what I'd like. You're going to do. do that. But I just want to really quickly see. What you I... could have an orange. You could have an 80. That's. I was like, going to you know, say the equivalent in orange would be what. There's a 30 watt combo and I can't remember what it's called. So you could have the TH30, which I think is this one. Yeah, seven, 750. TH30 combo? Yeah. But that's not valve, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's absolutely. the valve it's the Thunderverb 30. Yeah. Okay. That's put the cat amongst the pigeons. So you couldn't have any pedals with that, so there's no reverb in there, don't you? Oh, nah. Just what about? You could have Ignators, you could have Marshalls, Dude. you could have Black Stars. Just sat on this so that Lee can't see it. No, that's one I, I already so the, know it's there. <laughs> I already know it's there, it's what I'm going for. So, B is making noises about the Ignator. What are you saying, this is good, is it? So, a rather large Afro bird has tipped me off and told me that potentially the Ignator tweaker is uh, full of glass and dirty and might just do what we need it to do. So I'm kind of torn. Why don't you take that? And we'll go and try it next to the base well, breaker. Well, can I afford to get this, this, and a pedal? You have got uh, £130 left out of your How pedal How much is budget. a TS... Uh, screen Th there's no reverb on here. Oh, you're kidding me. So what you probably want is a reverb pedal. Is there an effects loop? Oh, yeah. Yes. Reverb it is, then. Is it, yeah, Hall of Fame is within Hall budget. of Fame it is, then. Is there an effects Okay, so you're going to try that with a Hall of Fame yes. versus... Uh, so you're looking fine. at, essentially, my rig. I have £250 to spend. 
and I'm going to get <laughs> rinsed here. Uh, at home, I've got a Blackstar HT1. It's a 200 pound amplifier. It's a great sounding amplifier, but there's really no point in me trying to have a one watt amplifier to compete with Rob's, you know, 40 it's watt a nice tube. 95 pound amplifier, amplifier. No, mate. There's, uh, so, now I was thinking I go with the Vox AB15, which I completely was blown away with the other day when we did stuff but I'm still slightly worried that it's the smaller speaker and not that loud so I have another plan this is a bit old school and if I'm totally honest with you I might be going out on a limb here and I may be about to crash and burn but follow me you're gonna go cube I could go I could go cube 80 honestly. oh my god and I know I can get a decent sound out of that and it's got reverb and delay and stuff in it well I have so, one at home yeah in a head that I customised, and it yeah. is a fantastic amplifier. I mean, I'm kind of avoiding going for any of the amps that need to be programmed because I kind of know that we're doing a video, and it's, yeah, it's it's. I'm so you would rather go for that. that than something with valves? Well, I've got so little choice for valves. You know, so I've got all the, like the one watt or the no watt. I suppose I could. Again, there's that little Fender bass. I don't even think I could afford the bass breaker 007. It's tough. Was that 269, wasn't I it? I think it was 269. Yeah, I can't afford that. I'm really sorry for you. So I think I'm just gonna, <laughs> I think I'm just gonna cube it up. I mean, okay. the, I could do Marshall MG. Personally, between the Marshall MG and the Ronin Cube, I would cube all yeah, the I way. Yeah, I think I'd cube it. I think I'd cube it. Or that Vox AV15, but my worry is because it's the one with the 10 inch speaker, it's just gonna sound a little small up against your more manly speaker. Um, uh, is that cube 80 watts? Yeah. I think we do that, don't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Do you know what? I'm going to win this. I'm going, let's put, here's my rig. I reckon I could gig with this. In fact, oh, I don't even reckon, I know I could. And I don't need any pedals because I've got everything built in. Let's do this. There's my rig. I have change out of a thousand pounds. Let's go and see who sounds better, me or Rob. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the room. Oh, we are. Mm. We are. We have coffee. We have uh, guitars ranging from you know cheap to expensive, and amps ranging from cheap to expensive. We even have a pedal or two. Uh, but yes. we have spent no more than the princely sum of one thousand pounds. Imperial credits of the realm. I have slightly sobered up. Mm. Yes. Should and we tell our American friends as well? Just so you guys know, thousand pounds English money includes VAT. So in real money, without our sales tax, is about eight hundred pounds. So in dollars wise, it's probably about twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, roughly. Which is a lot of money. Twelve to thirteen hundred dollars. It's a lot of money, but not unreasonable if you work really hard and you know all that kind of stuff. Blah, well, blah, blah. and it's kind of where you've got to go to get into the sort of the mid price gear, isn't yeah. it? You know, it's, it's, it's so. But it is there. You go. That's you what, know what we've got. Both of these rigs, gigging rigs. Yes. But let me just say, um, I did pick the igniter, and then I plugged into the igniter, and I plugged into the the bass breaker. And to be really honest with you, for the style I play, the bass breaker was better. Well, the bass breaker with a couple of pedals kind of it was just, pretty immense, Honestly, it? it's ridiculously great. Yeah. The Igniter sounds really, really good. Um, I, I kind of feel a bit bad that I'm not going to be using it, but to be honest, compared with the bass breaker and the Timmons, yeah. and I've got an MXR carbon copy in the loop, oh, it's which, just uh, a great sound. Beazle Diesel, which was the uh, Sounds Like video that you used the Igniter in? So you probably can't hear that, but if, you, if you're if you thinking, damn it, I wish I'd hear the Ignator, go and watch the Sounds Like videos mm -hmm. that Rabir does on Carlos Santana and Gary Moore because he uses the amplifier I would say, those. I think the Ignator has a better low-end chug response for metal. Mm. I think this is way more... And it's quite a bit louder, the Ignator. It's a lot louder, but I think this, for me, is way more... Yep. It's got the crunches, yep. it's got the kind of fusion-y lead stuff. Look, tone I is just completely to subjective. Um, right, 
What so, have you got, Lee? Well, hang on. So you've got Fender Brace Breaker. Yes. You've got... Uh, I've got a Pacifica. This is the 112V in Yellow Natural. Now, yeah. I used to own one of these. This is the Pacifica that started it all, wasn't it? It is. So even though the Pacifica range expanded massively now and there's cheaper models and dearer models and all sorts, this was the original student choice. You know, yep. Just buy that. If you mm -hmm. want to learn to play guitar, back in the day, you bought this. Nowadays, to be completely honest with you, loads of other brands have kind of upped their game and make comparatively good uh, guitars. But back, you know, like not that long, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was this baby all day long. These are so well made. And I mean, for the price, yeah. you absolutely can't yeah. go wrong. Yeah. I would genuinely play this live, this rig. Yeah, you could. It's great. Yeah. We probably should have, we kind of decided that uh, th we've gone for live rigs, haven't we? I mean, I've intentionally... Uh, well, I would never think of buying a rig that I couldn't take out and play absolutely. live. So yeah. what, what, what pedals did you buy? Andy so Timmons, I've got Angry the Charlie. Andy Timmons, Angry Charlie on the floor. The now magic I've, tone. I've got it set up, so if I roll off, I thought I'd show you, if I roll mm -hmm. off, uh, the the goodness from my from my guitar. You get that crunchy, but nothing wrong with that. It's such a it's nice such a great sound. sound. If I bring in all of the guitar. I'm sorry, that's a great guitar sound. If you wanted even more gain for sort of saturated lead solos, stamp on the top. <laughs> Too much, too much gain for rhythm, but beautiful for a saturated solo. And of course, you've got all the in-between sound. So, <laughs> in the blue corner... <laughs> So obviously my challenge was the opposite. I had 250 to spend on the amp, and if I want any pedals within that, and 750 to spend on the guitar. So the, e well, I say the easy choice. I've got a great guitar here. I have got uh, a Gibson American-made Les Paul Studio with the, um, 
the satin finish. Actually, do they call it a studio or a tribute? A tribute, I mm. apologies. Uh, so two humbuckers, um, no fancy stuff, so no binding. Um, so no is it a tribute top. to a Les Paul because it's not a real Les Paul? It's a tribute to the 50s. Uh, because it's got the slightly fatter neck on it. Um, uh -huh. I, I don't actually, to be honest, I don't really know why they call this tribute, but the range goes kind of um, standard, traditional, classic studio, studio tribute. Right, okay. And then, is there one below this? CM, uh, which is like a single pickup, really stripped. So down. it's the best guitar in the world. It's a great guitar, it's a, it's a proper Les Paul. It's an American made proper Les Paul. Amplifier wise, I've gone for the Cube 80. So this is an 80 watt solid state amplifier. So more than capable of going out and doing some small kind of gigs. Should be able to compete with Rob's 15 watt um, bass breaker. Oh, I'm fairly sure that's way louder. Well, I don't know. It's probably louder clean, <clears throat> but I think once you start to drive it, it's probably similar. I've got back bucket loads of stuff in here. So I've got a, I've got a clean tone. Um, I think a lot of people are going to be quite surprised at how good that sounds. All right, hang on, let's just turn my chorus off. You've been playing with your... coil taps on this guitar so I can't sort of get any kind of more stratty than that. What is nice about having a solid state amplifier of course is I can go super quiet and still you know get some good tones and I've got stuff like you know if, if I don't think I'm going to use it but I've got a little bit of chorusy. Flanges, phases, I've got kind of crazy. Uh, uh, that's the, by the way, that's effects. the best effect in the sound. I love it, uh, I play it all the time. Tremolo, so if you want your old fashioned. Anyway, probably not gonna use any of those. Reverb and delay, then I can press a button and go over to a driven sound where I have about 10 different types of amp modulation. I've chosen what they call classic. Uh, whoa! <laughs> uh, because I like the, it's a sort of a mid-driven. is that that sounds like you. Yeah, it's, it's a good tone. It, you'll see when Rob and I start jamming together, it doesn't do all that lovely multi-layered harmonic sort of stuff that a tube amp does. It, I have a solo feature. So again, another thing that what you'll see me doing is kind of leaning back over whilst we're jamming and just plugging in different sounds. But solo features. <laughs> I got some tones, I can stick headphones in there if I want to. So look. And also your amp will never die. Yeah, running cubes, as we've proven many times before, you can shoot them with arrows, set them on fire, do all sorts of stuff and they never die. They never uh, die. Unlike valve amplifiers, which if you watch the video we did of the something earlier on today, really? something, uh, a Hot Rod Deluxe did in fact go It's basically the video. White Walker of amplifiers. Um, so let's jam out. No, actually, should we be subjective? This guitar plays great. This is this is gonna um, clearly. I am not going to be frustrated sitting playing at this guitar. I would be inspired to play with a guitar like this, and I would be happy to turn up to a you know a proper gig with proper people in the audience and go. I'm a proper guitar player because I've got a Les Paul. Yeah. Uh, well, let me be subjective then. So this guitar also plays 
great. Yeah. But there are a couple of things that could be improved, and it's all because they've not had a lot of budget to spend on, you know, the, the labour yeah. time and everything. Yeah. So, for example. <laughs> When I when I get to the top and start playing up here, I can feel the frets are a little tiny bit rough. Yeah. And it's not like super like, oh my god, this is really bad, I can't play it. I just know that they feel a bit rough on the fingers and they've not been yeah. you know whacked down as much as they could be. But I mean honestly it plays like <laughs> It plays great. Yeah. Um, the pickups sound remarkably good to my ears. Yeah. I think the difference is with the affordable single coils, you really notice that they're affordable. Humbucker, they've done a brilliant yeah. job on. So the humbucker. That's great. It, it's stuff like on a guitar like this, it's stuff like the trem system isn't really designed to be used. No. It? it just sits there. No, it's back. a feature. It, it's got yeah. relatively affordable machine heads, stuff like that. You, you'd expect to see some fret wear maybe a little sooner but on a like guitar like this. But like this neck pickup. It's just slightly missing areas of the spectrum that I would want it to yeah. have. Um, so we're not saying at all that this is a bad guitar. No. It's a bloody great guitar. Yeah, it is. It's just that, you know, I think if you were really into your guitar music just and you turn were giving, that tone knob for me. You'd it feels nice. But it's really, really loose. It is loose, yeah. It just feels like this what, like it's oh yeah the volume one's way but I don't know oh it, it taps. Wait a minute, I've got a It has a feature that your guitar doesn't. I love this guitar. Yeah, I gotta say, to be honest with you, and this is, this is I'm realizing what an utter snob I am when it comes to guitars, but do you know what? My biggest problem going out and gigging a Yamaha Pacifica would purely and simply it's be, Yamaha? people would go, he's got a Yamaha Pacifica. <laughs> See, now I think it's kind of cool. If you take a Yamaha Pacifica, and, our and, you, put a, yeah. and you put a, a war pig in here, and you put a nice yeah. you know, yeah. nut up here, you change the, the tuners, you I take out the middle pickup and I throw it in the bin, uh, give myself a bit more space yeah. for, for hybrid picking, and then I change the sound Relicate for a quarter like pounder, relicate from just playing it, yeah. like Pete, Pete Honori does, give it to your kids to play with, yeah. and then I change the electrics, yeah. and then for maybe a couple hundred pounds, suddenly you've got this great playing guitar. Not dissimilar to what I did to that Squire Strat. Yeah. You know, not that long ago. No, I, 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 I don't like people disagree people that take those Hello Kitties and put EMGs yeah, in them. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. Look, we should jam, because should I, jam. I think ultimately the big difference that you hear between a valve amplifier and a solid state tends to be when two people are jamming and... Uh, well, what was that thing that you wrote earlier? <laughs> One more so jam, just because I'm loving it. Have you thrown your plectrum over there? Have that one. Is this spilling in your mouth? No.
conclusion? Well, there think, is no right and there is yeah, no wrong. Yeah, I was just going to say. Just because, do what you want to do. Yeah, but... If you want a great... If you want to spend all your money on the best guitar you can get and get a cheap amplifier, you can make great noises. If you want to spend all your money on an expensive amplifier and a cheap guitar, you can make great noises. Yeah, I guess if the cheap guitar feels good yeah. to you, then that's fine. If the, if the cheap amplifier sounds good to you, that's fine. It's in the ears and eyes of the beholder. So, I've been Rob Chapman. Absolutely no conclusion. All my preconceptions blown out the water. Boom! Uh, and yet again, <laughs> just goes to show, don't preconceptions are bad. The best thing to do is just go and try stuff and then yeah, and see please, what happens. Please definitely try the Fender Blue uh, Bass Breaker. Absolutely. Because it's ball breaking ridiculously good. Please definitely try a Roland Cube because you can get better sounds out of it than you'd think. Yep. Please absolutely try a Les Paul Tribute because that's about the best Les Paul that you can buy for the money. And try a 112V because why not? Yes, absolutely. What have you got to lose? Kapow Kapow. And an Andy Timmons Angry Charlie because that just makes everything sound better. See you guys later. Bye. Boom! And <laughs>